okay? Yeah. And then people get angry because they're not beating the impossible yeah. all the time. Yeah. And some of them, coming from a very strange base, they don't do the homework. Mm. And uh, like some of us are older, some of us infirm, but uh, others a bit crazy, like the Irish farmer who goes to the bog all week digging the turf, doesn't, doesn't shave, it doesn't powder himself, and he goes into the pub on Saturday night smelling like a skunk, and he's sitting in the corner sucking a pint, and the door opens, and in and out of the sun comes a beautiful blonde, backlit, with a beautiful hair just done at the hairdressers. He gives her a wink. He thinks he has a chance. He hasn't done the homework. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the Godfrey goes to the first tea. Uh, I, I, I'm not derisory of them. They're my people, and I'm one myself. Uh, but uh, if if uh, if you're not happy, just trying. Tough luck. Right, good morning everyone. It's a, uh, I'm just quietly making my way out of Jewish here because it's a very early start and I don't want to wake everybody else. But uh, another great night and uh, maybe a few too many Guinness, as seems to be the case anywhere in Ireland, but it is a real good night here at Joyce's. Anyway, I'm off to what is a very special golf course and it could be a really special episode. I think that the golf course design is a high form of art, you know, that you're working with the, you know, with the sky, the yeah. clouds changing, yeah. the light changing, the vegetation changing colour with the season, and then you get a chance to add your touches. Yeah. It's meant to give variation on the landscape. I, I, you see, I view uh, golf, golf courses as uh, canvases. And uh, it just mystifies me how they happen to come to be acknowledged uh, clearly as works of art in the, when they're yeah, done yeah. at the better level. So we've arrived, we're at the European Club. Now this place is uh, its not exactly off the beaten track and from everything I've heard and everybody I've spoken to, they really rate this golf course as being right up there with the very best in Ireland. And I can't wait to get onto that first tee. Okay, so this is what you see when you walk to the first tee. The European Club. So you've got another little practice putting green just before you arrive on the first tee. And uh, I'm blown away on the first tee box. That's how seriously good that looks. Oh my word. Quite honestly, that could be the best opening hole and tee shot that I have ever stood on. Just look at that. Wow. Oh, well, we're away, and I can't tell you how excited I am to get this uh, round on the way. It's, uh, I'm not the most animated, as you know, but this face is, uh, well, it's really happy inside, I can tell you. I can't so wait to see what's to come.
this could be a long video because we just walk into the second tee we drive backwards but that's the green we're playing to a little par three and i don't think i've ever been so excited to play uh, a round of golf in a long long time well that could be good if it's the right club we've got the other camera on the green oh i'll take that that was beautiful how good is that to see a ball flying high soft landing we've got half a chance of a birdie putt but what a great golf hole oh my goodness a great feature of the course is these and i, I read about it before and there's these um sleepers are uh, create the face for every bunker and i think visually they just look so so good sit down wow look fairly flat to me but clearly a serious camber off the left which i'd uh, not allowed for right no messing yeah, that'll do. It's a decent three. Well, I just hit what was my uh, best strike of the day, which was a four wood into this par five green. It felt so good, but you get into a, a narrow gully and then you're left with this. There's some serious change in elevation leading up to the green. And then uh, you've got, our, I mean, how awkward is that? And with you sort of bump and run it around the side. I've brought a lofted club, so I'm not going to be doing that. So this is probably the high risk option. Nah, do you know what? I don't think that's too bad, you know. It's not great, but it's not bad. By hole five we need the course planner because uh what i'm looking down at is that all i can see is yellow gorse it looks really pretty but clearly we need to find a uh, a route down here so it's 400 yards off the whites we've got two bunkers on the left hand side which i need to cover there 254 so basically it is going to be four wood at that gorse bush that I can see straight down over the bunkers on a very small fairway. Oh my word, I can start to hear sounds of the sea which is just over there and we've also got blue skies as well. Do you know what, I'm going to over egg it a bit but this is the happiest I could be right now I tell you. Oh, so nice. Might be a bit happier if this birdie puck goes in. Wow, nearly, and it wasn't a birdie, but it was for par. Yeah, I did over egg it a bit. Anyway, how good is that? And I can now see the sea. I can smell it as well. Now this is a photo of the week special, as we've got a few more picks to choose from than normal. Not great light, but this course is very photogenic. Andy or Tracy, in the comments down below. Well, first bit of sort of quirkiness 
about this golf club or golf course is that there are 20 holes of the European Club um, and this is the first one of the additional. So we just played hole seven and this, would you believe, is 7A. And we've got oh, not much, 125 up the hill. There is another hole to come later on the course, which makes it 20 holes and a par 77 golf course. Well, the, the story, very quickly, it, I started thinking of a golf course of my own in 1954, when I read that Jimmy DeMarie and Jack Burke were building a golf course of their own in Houston, Texas. And I said, wow, what a nice idea. And then I heard they were going to call it the Champions Club. Now, as a very young guy, I said, the Champions Club, boy, that's me, eh? Yeah. So I set out to get a golf course of my own mentally. And uh, back in the 70s, I built a nine-holer down in County Sligo on a beautiful piece of ground with a nice river going through it. Yes. And it put out the flags and went to bed and got up after a night's rain and the golf course was gone under a flood. The uh -huh. river, the nice river became a flood. And uh, so I learned university couldn't teach you how much I learned about drainage in that one. <laughs> and uh, then I said, OK, I'm beaten. That's the dream gone. But it wasn't. Dreams don't die. And uh, then uh, I looked at my shoes and they were dirty. I said, what am I doing building a golf course inland when I spent most of my childhood at Ross's Point on sand? Yeah. I should be a lynx person. Yeah. So I rented a helicopter. I was able to justify it on the basis of following the dream. Plus, I was able to uh, sell photographs and I was doing photography and I was doing my magazines. And um, so we got uh, up at Dublin Airport and headed north up past Port Marnock, up yeah. past Royal County Loud, up to Royal County Down, Royal Port Rush, down the west coast, across the south coast, and here it was, here, looking for a piece of ground, lynx ground, yeah. that wasn't yet used for golf and mm -hmm. looked suitable. So here it was within 30 minutes of home. Yeah. So I, I spent, I spent a, a fortune yeah. going around the coast. What, what if I came out and turned left at the house, I was here for, I was home for lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the second reason was good nature to the ground, nice shape and nice, nice and you, topography. You, you could see that straight away from that. Oh God, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was very good. You know, a lot of the links uh, are, are quite, um, quite flat. And, and uh, yeah. this one just has a type of heave hole to it that is uh, manageable for yeah. walking in that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, big enough to give character. Well, it's, it's very simple, you know. Uh, I, I started golfing in 1949 as a little boy. And uh, I, I, my mind was shaped by that the grass was high. And your first mission was don't lose the golf ball. Daddy and Mammy won't be happy. Yeah. So you, you started playing down uh, the path because the grass be that high down the path from the tees, down the path near enough to get to the fairway in one. Then work your way back up to Mammy's tee and then work your way back up to Daddy's tee. Right. But always uh, recognizing uh, that the objective is to get the ball safely from A to Z. And uh, so uh, put in as much fun as you can along the way, but uh, uh, you're asking people to act intelligently yeah. and um, uh, find their way and bring yeah. their ball with them. Yeah. If, if in America the people go out and there's a big lake or river, uh, they make very strenuous efforts to keep out of it. Uh, but when, when the hazard is grass mm. and you can walk on it, they seem to switch off yes, that there's okay. danger, the yeah, same yeah. danger exists, yeah, yeah. you know. That's and that's the basic question. Uh, leave uh, shots that can be played subject to people going off the correct tees and uh, if they act sensible.
Well, that's the best iron shot of it today, and I'm not, I'm not even going to get the putter. I'm giving myself that. But when I was stood on, on this tee, um, I just made a reference that the thing about this course is it's 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 very good. It's also very tough, and uh, I think it certainly find out any weaknesses in your game because, as I said earlier, from the tee position, um, you've really got a You've got, to, you've got to try and find fairways and there's not a lot of sort of bailout areas and then the greens are so uh, well complex in many ways that yeah they're big they're vast but landing in the correct spot and getting anywhere near the flag is uh, quite difficult and that was a rarity that's the first birdie of the day if you look back down 17 that's pretty much epitomizes what i said earlier it's quite narrow there's no miss left or right and then you might well if you're lucky get yourself on the green at some point but this golf course is without doubt right up there with the very best i've played i mean i don't want to get over excited it's certainly within the top five i've ever played there's very rare you visit a golf course where every hole is good a lot of the even the very best golf courses i've played you might get nine twelve holes of very good golf holes and then you've got some that make up the number up into 18 this isn't that. This has got 18, well, it's got 20 actually, very individual golf holes. Each of them make you stop and think about every shot you play. And in terms of the design, I'm clearly, I'm no course architect, but what I do know is Pat Ruddy's done an incredible job because of the way that you are. You've got no option but to think about what you're trying to do. There's no just stepping up and picking up driver, then flicking an iron or a wedge on. This is a proper golf course and, uh, oh my word, I just can't tell you. I'm still on the back of 17, we're going up 18 now, but it's been an incredible day. And I know this isn't the type of golf course that really fits the series of off the beaten track. It's an expensive place to play and average golfers aren't going to play this every day of the week. But if you get the opportunity, and maybe it's a special occasion, then it's certainly one of the best courses, like I said, I've ever played. And I would certainly recommend without doubt. as well as a work of uh, examination of a person's character and skill and patience. Uh, but it, it's meant to put you into a, a beautiful place where if you have a soul at all, uh, you smell the roses is the old phrase and you look around. I have but two things to say to end this video. The European Club is a work of art, and Pat Ruddy, you're a gentleman and an artist.